Hello! I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. I'm gonna get all set up here. I have some wonderful happy mail to share with you all. I also have some projects from the kids, some fun stuff today. Hi, Anne-Marie. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Benny. How is everyone today? Okay, I think I've just about gotten myself all set up here. I'm excited to be with you today. I've got lots of fun things happening. Yes, I am live. <laughs> I am live. Hi, Philomena, how are you? Thank you, Jean. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. Anne Marie is watching from Burlington, Ontario today. Wow, you made it for to see your new grandbaby. That's wonderful. I hope that you have a really great visit. Hugs back to you, Betty. There's a hug coming your way. So we've got lots of stuff to talk about today and I want to make sure that I get to show some of the things that the children have been making. They've sent home a really good batch of things that the children have created at school. And this is from Trip, and he has he has colored a pumpkin, which is really cool. It's kind of like the life cycle of a pumpkin. And I think this is good because he doesn't like to hold, he has trouble holding things with his fingers. So we go through the, the whole part of the vine. And I won't show it all, but I was gonna see if I could show one part of it here. This is the part I like the best because it shows that he is really you know trying to focus on doing something inside the lines not that outside the lines is bad but he has trouble with anything with that has to do with the the tripod grasp the way that we hold a pencil or a marker um it's kind of very challenging for trip and it all has to do with his it's neurological and that trans translates out so here's another one that he did, and this is a color by number, and this is something that they like to do in school to, to work like speech therapy and physical therapy, occupational therapy, that kind of stuff. And they encourage him to, this is probably OT that he did, and they encourage him to use his skills. And it looks like this is a book for cutting, and it's a cute little book. And it's called Ten on the Fence, and you know, just like the monkeys jumping on a bed. <laughs> so cute. Thank you, Anne Marie. I think he's doing a really good job too. He's come a long way. So those are the only ones I have for trip. And this is something that I have from Nate, and I just absolutely love this. And they wrote that he did it in speech too, which I, it makes me really happy they put the date and they did it in speech, but they did have him color it in, and he wrote his name down here at the bottom, and then he made a little booklet here also. So excited. Good morning, Debbie, how are you today? And Nate got the little stickers in too. He loves stickers. He's been asking me more lately to, to help out with tasks like if I'm sweeping, then he's wanting to try to help me sweep. He wanted to help me do the dishwasher the other day. I'm like, yeah, can you help me? I would love that. He's only five, but he really wants to help. This is for thanks uh, or for for Halloween. I'm sorry, it's only been the month since Halloween's been gone. 
but they sent it home late because it looks like this it's got tape on it I think they had this in the hallways or maybe up in the classroom but look at what a magnificent job he did unbelievable Nate is really doing so so well he goes to a special school and it is for special needs children that are of different levels from low functioning to high functioning and Nate is high function functioning on the autism scale so he is able to do a lot of the things that some of the other children can't and it, you know he's a model to them while he's getting the support he needs too oh and I'm really excited I was so happy to see these we have some more letters and it looks like they've been progressing through the alphabet. This is so cool. Do you guys love these? I absolutely love them. And look how they look how they had him add the giraffe pieces. Now, I'm guessing that the teachers probably did a little bit more of this than Nate did, but I'm sure they're having him do certain things and writing his name as one, which he's getting much better with doing. And maybe like making little slash marks for that and then he made a Thanksgiving placemat Oops. which is really cool so we'll let Nate use that tomorrow if you're watching from the United States then you know that Thanksgiving is tomorrow in the US and in Canada I know that you guys have already had your Thanksgiving but we are totally gearing up for it here in the US I went and did all my shopping, but I found, of course, a few things that I didn't pick up. <laughs> and we don't do traditional food here in our family. We do alternatives, things that I know my children will eat. Like my kids do not eat turkey, and they do not eat dressing. They don't eat the casseroles. They're, it's not their thing. They have special taste requirements, and it is what it is. Yes, he did, Betty. He did draw the boy on the placemat. Isn't that something? He did so well. Um, Anne Marie, yes, they had their happy, their Thanksgiving. And thank you, happy Thanksgiving it's from us to you too. Um, yeah, it, we're gonna do pizza. <laughs> um, I can't eat traditional pizza because I have food allergies and I have got an alternative for me but we're gonna do pizza for lunch, and then for dinner, we're gonna have Mexican food, which is something that most of us like. Trip, not so much, because he likes a very bland diet, but Nate likes a little bit of spice, and so we're going to have a Mexican feast. We're, we're gonna have some sweet tamales that are, they have corn, and then let's see what else. We're gonna have nachos, uh, which Nate will turn into tacos, because nachos are a little difficult for him but a taco he can hold. And we're going to have jalapeno poppers, which daddy's gonna make. That's his number one favorite food, like of all time. And I'm not sure what else we're going to have. I mean, that's like way more than enough. I could make some Spanish rice if I needed to, but I don't think we're gonna need it. But it's, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And we just try to keep it very relaxed and low key because holidays are hard for the children. They have a hard time processing that things are different that it's a different day and so it's just one of those one of those things we just try to get through with the least amount of friction so i have some happy mail look at all this happy mail i haven't shared it in a couple of weeks and so i got a few things kind of trickling in and now i've got lots to share so i'm very very happy do I make dessert? Yes, Anne-Marie. I have plans to make a pumpkin cheesecake. I have a graham cracker crust that is allergy friendly that I usually keep one on hand all the time. And the pumpkin cheesecake that I make is no bake. It's just cream cheese and some heavy cream that I whip up. And I put a little bit of pumpkin in it so that it seems like it's pumpkin-y without, without having too much pumpkin, if that makes any sense. But yes, and then I put some cream on the top. Yes, it's all gluten-free, egg-free, potato-free, shellfish, crustacean, all of the crazy stuff I'm allergic to. But yes, um, it, will, it, it will be nice to have a little dessert too. And my husband's favorite is cheesecake, so it's, it's something that he can eat. 
So here is a piece of happy mail from Robin. And I think I showed you guys something from Robin last week. I'm not sure if it was this card, so I wanted to make sure that I showed you. And there was a beautiful note inside. And Robin is a friend of mine, but she's also a team member. And so she sent me this, and there's a, she used some, some beautiful, beautiful words inside. But she sent my children some gifts. I think I showed the cards that she sent to them. So she sent my children gifts so that they could have something special to do while she was with me at On Stage in Orlando. Isn't, isn't that so thoughtful and amazing? Robin is a wonderful person. I just can't say enough good things about her. And I'm going to kind of go through these a little fast so that we don't take too long because I have lots of big news to share with you too. Here's a card from Joanne. And this was made from a paper pumpkin kit. And this is a fantastic example of how easy it is to just use those paper pumpkin kits and make up a quick card and use it for anything. And she wrote a very, very quick note inside. And it there it is. Perfect. Paper pumpkin to the rescue. And there are some gorgeous envelopes in with that particular kit. This is from a couple of months ago. But there's always some wonderful stuff in paper pumpkin. So here is a rack card from Lynn Mattingly. She's in Queensland, Australia, and she has some beautiful artwork here on her envelope. I'll show it to you. And the stamps are so pretty. She's done a great job. Thank you, Lynn, for thinking of me. So this is a top folding card, and I'm really, really loving the colors. She's used the vases and some beautiful ribbon. Amazing. I absolutely adore this card. Thank you so much, Lynn, for thinking of me. And I love the pearls that you put in the center of the flowers. It did come to me completely intact. And the little piece of bubble wrap that you put in there kept everything from poking through the front. So you, you, you were so thoughtful and sent that to me. And I'm so, so thankful. I'm gonna put it up and display it in my craft room. I have a card from Priscilla, and Priscilla is my friend that lives in Texas, and you guys are gonna love this. Perfect for Thanksgiving. It is a Thanksgiving card. Check it out. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at Priscilla's coloring, and I love the color of the card base that she's chosen. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Amazing. Thank you so much, Priscilla, and happy Thanksgiving to you, too. I have another card from my friend Betty, who makes the best cards. She is amazing. And we have this fun little turkey guy who does not look very happy that it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> Her cards usually hold a lot of humor in them. And I admire that, that she's able to really catch the moment. And it's so much fun. And then on the back, we have another little turkey guy. And your coloring looks just so wonderful, Betty. Perfect. But yes, this turkey does not look like he is a happy guy. <laughs> not at all. And the last one I have is a card from Tammy Hewlett. And I missed her at on stage. We were supposed to swap cards and and we weren't able to hook up together. So she sent it in the mail to me, which was so thoughtful. Thank you so much, Tammy. And you guys are gonna love this. Are you ready? It's a good one. Check it out. Amazing. So she used floral frame stamps, foliage frame, and layering circle framelits. I'm reading it from the back. Shimmery white, crumb cake, pear pizzazz, garden green, vellum is the, are the papers. Frosted floral designer series paper, first mark, pear pizzazz, garden green for flirty flamingo, poppy parade ink. She also used gold embossing, gold shimmer paint, an aqua painter, braided linen thread, metallic pearls, and the smooching, smooching technique amazing gorgeous 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 Tammy does amazing she's she's 
not just a paper crafter. She is an, a true artist, and I'm I'm so thankful. Gorgeous work, gorgeous work. I shared all my swaps already, and this is this is one that would have been one of my swaps if we would have caught up with each other. But we just we couldn't catch up together. So that kind of stuff happens. Yes, it is absolutely gorgeous. So I have some big news to share with you. I'm not sure if you have caught it yesterday. Uh, I do too, Betty, I love that floral frame. But yesterday I shared with you all in a live video that I have been selected to participate in a beta test with Stampin' Write markers from Stampin' Up. So how that works is they contacted a very small amount of demonstrators and they have let us put our feelers out to people that would like to order single markers that are stamp and write markers. Now I'll show you the difference. Stamp and write markers are this style. They're the long, thin, double tipped, not the alcohol markers, not stamp and blends. These are stamp and write markers. They have a brush end and a bullet end and they carry the same ink that is in our stamp pads. So you can use your ink refill to fill these up as well. The way that the beta test works is they've given me a very small window of opportunity to extend to everyone the possibility of being able to place an order for individual markers. So if you, for example, would like to get a, which one is this, Gorgeous Grape marker, without purchasing an entire set of markers, then that would be possible. And this is going to only last for a few days. Let's see, today is the 21st, and I have to turn my order in on the 28th. So if you would like to purchase and participate in this beta test, then if there's a few markers that you would like to stock that you do not have, this would be a good chance for you to get some markers that will work for gifting for Christmas. If you just like to get a couple of markers without getting a whole big giant set. Sometimes I've purchased a pack of markers and broken it up into different, like put a few here and a few there, made them into a gift package and given them to teachers for gifts or for my friends that I know work in the offices that way, you know, like coworker gifts that sort of thing, or just for your own crafting. I use my markers for office work as well. I write in my planner with them. I use them for card making and paper craft projects as well. That's the number one purpose that I use them for. In fact, our project today is gonna to focus on the stamp and write markers and a really fun way for you to be able to use them with what I call the color layering technique. If you are interested in participating in this beta test, I will put a link in the comments here on the video. If you're watching on YouTube, the beta test link will be up at the very top line. Click it, fill out the form. The most important line is to tell me which markers you would like. And you can get as many markers as you like, but there's a limit of one per color. So if you want to get 12 markers scattered all throughout the color families, there's a limit of one color per order. And our order goes in all at the same time. This offer is open to demonstrators. Yes, as long as you're in the United States, then you can participate in this. You do not have to be a customer. You don't have to be a demonstrator. It doesn't matter. It goes just because it's different. This is a beta test. So if you'd like to participate, I would love to have you help us show Stampin' Up! that yes, we do want to buy individual Stampin' Write markers. We do like the opportunity, just like the Stampin' Blends, to order them individually, that we can build up our collection at our own pace or use them for different purposes. But yes, Stampin' Write markers, if you would like to participate, this is the time to do it. Okay, let's see, what else do we have? We have the month of November almost over, and that means that the promotion for Snowflake Showcase is nearly done. There's only 
basically nine more days to purchase that promotion. And hi, Kathy. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. If you would like to participate in the Snowflake Showcase promotion and purchase those products, it includes some lovely little snowflake trinkets, some white velvet paper, some stamp sets, and amazing dies. And if you make a purchase of any of those items from my online store, then I have tutorials to gift to you for free. And this is not the tutorial that I give to all my orders. If you, you probably know that if you place an order with me every single month, I have a brand new 12 pack tutorial that is made with current product. Well, in addition to that, if you purchase anything from the Snowflake Showcase, I guess it's a suite, a bundle, but a group of products, then I have a special tutorial also. And they're really big, nice tutorials. It's filled with ideas on using your Snowflake Showcase products. If you have any questions about that, then just leave me a comment right here and I'll be glad to get back to you or visit my online store. You can get there really quickly by going to my blog at jennyhalldesign.com and then on the right hand side just click the big shop now button and it will take you right over to my store and then you can make your choices from there. It doesn't matter whether you use a host code or not, that's entirely up to you. There is a host code that is in this post on the video description but it's not necessary to use the host code. I send you rewards points based on the amount of your purchase. And once you collect 10 points, you get a $50 shopping spree with or without the host code. So that kind of makes things a little more relaxed. Are you guys ready to craft? I'm ready to craft. So as always on my live videos, if you would please type the word question in capitals if you have a question about the thing I'm doing right at the moment so that I can easily see it, recognize it, and answer you on the spot. So capitals, capital letters of the word question and then type your question and it'll help me very quickly get back to you. So we're gonna move some things around. I will be stamping with the first frost stamp set and I'll flip the camera and give you a quick look of it. So First Frost Stamp Set is really fun to work with. I like that it has a varied look, kind of like dotted in different areas, more concentrated dots, and then lighter areas, lighter dots. This is a beautiful stamp set that gives a dimension, a, a natural look of dimension to it. So creating dimension with this is so much more easy than it is with if, you, if we were to do the shading ourselves. So we're going to use this image here, and I'm not really sure what type of a flower or a branch it is, but we're going to give it a little bit of a Christmas feel with some Christmas colors and use those stamp and Write markers. So I have already added my stamp using the Stamparatus. And I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here. And I broke one of my magnets. I need to order another magnet. That's another wonderful thing that about the Stamparatus accessories is if I break a magnet, I can just order a new one. So I've used a piece of washi tape down in the corner to make sure that this piece of paper is not going to move because it's very, very important for this technique to be successful I need to make sure that my, my piece of paper doesn't move at all. Using the markers is going to be a lot of fun because we can not just layer the colors on top of one another, but we can also isolate the colors away from each other. And this is something that we can do with our markers that we cannot do with our stamp pads. And this is the type of marker that is in the beta test. It's the stamp, stamp and Write marker filled with dye ink, and you use your ink refills to keep them nice, plump, and juicy so that you can continue to craft with them. Thank you guys for sharing the video. I appreciate it very much. This is going to be a little bit of a different color palette. It's a bit Christmassy with the reds and the greens, and I'm going to add the crumb cake in here for a little bit of a 
decayed look. That sounds a little bit morbid, but this time of the year, I see t little touches of brown around the edges of so many things, like leaves and trees all over the place is a lot of brown. We've gotten past most of the vibrant colors of fall, and now we're into just about brown everywhere. So I'm going to give a little bit of a natural look with the brown. And then I've got two reds that are very intense to be able to use down in the, the colors as well. This is Mary Merlot and I have Cherry Cobbler. So I want Mary Merlot to be the primary color that comes out, but Cherry Cobbler is gonna give some nice highlights. And for the greens, I have here Tranquil Tide and Pear Pizzazz. I, I chose Pear Pizzazz to go with Tranquil Tide because it will just give me those little touches of highlight just here and there. And Crumb Cake is going to be the perfect little brown that will complement these other colors. So, in fact, I think I'm gonna start with the brown. And the way that I like to do the color layering technique, in, and it works the best with red rubber stamp sets I have found. You can do this with photopolymer, it will work, but I just prefer red rubber. I, I like using red rubber stamps more than I do the others, but this works much better for me in this manner. So I'm going to start off by adding the brown just around the edges here. I'll do this on the leaves. There are three leaves here. And then I'll close the door of the Stamparatus and it's going to give me that just that little little bit of a guide of the brown to go with. We might come back to this. I think we probably will, but for now, then I'm gonna move on to some green coloring. I'll start with my lighter color and then I'll add the darker up on top of it. And that is basically the essence of this color layering technique. So making sure that I don't cover up the brown areas that I've already established, then I'll use this to kind of go right up to it. And sometimes I just work in little circles to kind of mix that primary color with the secondary color here. And it's going to give me just a little bit of that green with the brown. Now I really want the colors to be much more intense so I'm going to need to do this quite a few times. And each time I add a layer of the color, it's going to intensify. It's more, it's more ink and the, the ink will add up on the stamp. So we can see now that there are some light areas and some darker areas that are part of the way the stamp is created. So I'll be able to go in now with my darker colors, which I'll add the darker color to the base of the leaf. And it's really going to kind of bring things together. So working with what I've already got on there, and then I'll mix a little bit. I know this is by some people's standards, contaminating an e your marker, but I do not have a problem with it at all. So if I feel like I've got something on this marker that's a different color, then I'll take a, just a little piece of paper and scribble and it comes right off. But what we see here is a leaf image that has a little bit of a highlight, a lot of contour, and it has just that tiny bit. In fact, I'll go in and add more now. It has just that tiny bit of the, of the decayed look to make it look really natural. And that'll be the crumb cake around the edge. And it gives it a bit more dimension as well. So you may be able to tell that if this piece of paper moved at all, this technique is not going to be successful. 
it needs to stay put if I'm going to keep the color layering really looking nice. So now I can move on. I'll do a little bit more brown over here. I'm going to go much faster for these remaining leaves. And again, if you have any questions, then feel free to type them in the comments. And we can see that the leaf is starting to build up some color. And we'll do some layering of that color and, and make it look a bit more realistic. And the Tranquil Tide is so much more of a deep color. I don't want every leaf to look the same in my project, so I'm going to be very, very careful with it. And this time I'm going to mix a little bit of the lighter green. This is Pear Pizzazz. And I am staying away from that brown edge. And check out how real that looks. I hope you guys can see it nice and, and clear on the camera, but it really does cover in a more natural way, the, the color does, the when we use the markers. And then, then finally, this is that brown crumb cake. Can I move in closer, Joanne's asking? I'll try. Oh, I got a little bit in the wrong place. My marker went overboard, but that's okay, we'll fix it. Okay, I'll try to zoom in. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not letting me zoom in. When I post this on YouTube, I'll be sure that this section is, is zoomed in, so you can always watch the replay on YouTube. I apologize, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Facebook Live will not let me zoom in. I've had that problem for a while. It's It has to do with Facebook, with the broadcast. And here's the brown again. It looks like I keep adding more of this color here. So I'm gonna use my fingernail to remove some of this area. This is the light green mixing in with the brown. Oops. And it looks like this leaf is going to have even a different look. That's one thing I really like about stamping is that we can get a different look every time especially when we do hand coloring like with markers. And I would like to see more dark color up around the top edge here to appear like it's kind of folded over. So I'm going to add a more concentrated color on this side of the leaf. And I'm gonna blend that out with the green, with the light green. So we've got the dark green and the light green together. And see how it gives that beautiful contour? It's it's just like magic. And we still have that brown look around the edge. And so I can take just a scratch paper, make sure that I get off that darker green. It's not showing any problems at all. I do want a little bit more intense green here just a little bit. But I wanna temper it with a lighter color because otherwise I'm afraid that it'll give me too much of a, of a non-mixed up color. It just won't blend out well. There we go, perfect, perfect. Isn't it nice when we have something and it works right? <laughs> because it does not always work that way, believe me. I'm going to grab my chamois. I forgot to grab it in advance. 
And my chamois is not purple anymore. It's a bit more pink because I had to clean it with bleach. It was getting a little rough and nasty, so I made sure that I used a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of bleach and it just took the purple right out of the chamois. So I'm gonna move on now to coloring the stem and I want the stem to be more green than brown, but I can have a little bit of brown mixed in with it. So I wanna start off with the lighter of the two greens that I'm using. And this time I will be really careful with the tip of my marker not to touch the areas because this is a very fine tip. I, it allows me to do that, but I can touch the area, I can avoid the areas that I don't want to touch. And again, this is something that I would not be able to do with my stamp pads. The stamp and write markers are perfect for this. And each different layer that I go and add is going to give me a more intense color because it's more ink. This is a tricky area here in between all these little flower clusters. So I'm going to take care. And that's good enough for me for right now. But I will add some touches of green after I've added all the flowers because that's where I'll be able to see where I wanna add a natural contour. So working with these really brilliant red colors is going to be very, very bright. And I'm going to start with the lighter of the two, which is the Cherry Cobbler. And then we'll add the Mary Merlot. But I have an idea. I want to go brown first because that's going to echo the contouring to the leaves. So I'm going to add everything a little bit of brown around the edge. These markers are also really good for water coloring because it's made from dye ink. So you could stamp this particular technique on a piece of watercolor paper and you could quickly move your water brush over it, your aqua painter, and this is a perfect way to get a watercolor look. There we go, we've got just enough of the brown and we're gonna have that balance out the red because red is Red is gorgeous, but to make it look more real, it needs just a little bit of help with another color, a color assist. Here is Cherry Cobbler, and I'll start right next to where I put the brown. And I have a feeling that it's gonna take several layers of this color, but it's gonna look really brilliant. Pardon me. And then we'll be able to go back with the Mary Merlot, and that's going to be the deep areas. And that's where the eye will be drawn to. The eye will go there automatically. And I am avoiding the areas of the stem. This area that we colored before with the green, I'm trying to stay away from it. But this technique is very forgiving in this type of stamp. So I can always go back over it with green to kind of enhance things a little bit more. So I've got a base right now that is going to work for me. And then we'll bring in that deeper wine color and that is going to be the Mary Merlot. And again, this is the brush end we're using because it has the fine tip. This end is the bullet end and that's for writing. It's not for coloring. So now down into the deep part of these little flowers, I'm going to add the Mary Merlot.
and I can work it up in layers. And this will help me to be able to control the amount of color that I'm choosing to place. And the Stamparatus is just marvelous for this technique. There's no possible way I could do this if I didn't have a stamp position tool. I'm trying to avoid the tips because that's where I want the lighter color to be and the Mary Merlot down in the depth of the little flowers. Okay, now I wanna go back with the lighter color and really intensify these edges so that I can get a nice crisp look to each one of the flowers. Now that I'm not worried about over, over coloring them with the light color, this is going to see how it just kind of worked out to intensify everything here for me. And this is going to help me get that nice crisp stamped image. It looks like I went over just a little. So that's helping me to be able to get all of these flowers have the nice crisp ends. So I can I can look to see that I need to do more work over here. And because I've already added my dark color, I don't have to worry about staying off of the rest of the flower. Again, if you have any questions, then I'm right here to answer them for you. This one needs a little more help over here. Looks like it needs just a little more, but I'll get that with brown and here. We need to be a little more crisp in this area. And now I can work in the green in those areas that I see are going to need a little bit more help. But first I'll remove this red. If you don't have a chamois, then baby wipes will work really well, or if you have some sort of a lint-free cloth, like a microfiber cloth, then that works out really, really well for cleaning your stamps that are on a stamp positioner. So I'm gonna fill in this imaginary line where the other colors are overlapping it. because the green's not gonna bother my red now, since my red's in place. It's just going to intensify some more of that stamped image. Get up through here. There we go, now I can see lots of nice stamped image. And down in this area, which is over here. So with the markers, this is one really great way to be able to use what you have and have it go a little further. And this type of stamp set is really a lot of fun to color. I like using this technique because it allows me to be able to do custom colors Let's see, right over here. And this one. And because it's going down to the paper so very quickly, then there's not really any reason that I would have to 
like do a, a hot breath on the stamp because this is going over really fast. There we go. Now I think I'll finish up with just a little bit more of this crumb cake and I'll add just little touches of brown on the stem here and there. Just to give it that contoured look that we've got with the leaves. And it's going to give us a little bit more of a natural, just a bit of a more of a natural look. So there's not much brown that's showing up, but it's just enough to be able to see that that there's a little something. Just a little something there. So what do you guys think? How are you liking how this is shaped up? I'm really happy with the way that the colors are blending together on the stamp and then moving over to the paper because once they get to the paper, they're not gonna blend together at all because this is regular cardstock. If I were using watercolor paper, then they would have more time to be a little more playful. So this is pretty much how I want this particular image to come out looking. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of green here. Oh, great, Philomena, I'm so glad that you like to use this. This this is, like if I make cards that just make me happy to be able to say, oh wow, I absolutely am, am adoring how this card came out, then this is more of the style that, that I like to make. It's It comes out looking a bit more artistic, and you could turn this into a one layer card, but we're gonna add a few layers here. But this is something that is a really easy way to stamp. Now I wanna add the greeting, and I couldn't decide exactly what I wanted to stamp. So we've got a couple of options here. Wishing you all the best would fit in nicely over here. Congratulations would fit in down at the bottom. And here's to a season filled with warmth, comfort, and cheer. I don't really feel that there's a place down in this area for this it doesn't seem to fit very well for me, but wishing you the best would be fine. You could go with another stamp set and just make a very small greeting down here at the bottom that is a bit more in proportion. And I think we could do that. Let's see if I can find itty bitty greetings. And see what we have for, we could make this a thank you card, a hello card just about anything, a birthday, tis the season. Ah, there we go, tis the season, perfect. I don't know that I've used this one yet. There it is, I have used it. And this is, by the way, itty bitty greetings and it is filled with 32 different occasions. It could be, this would be beautiful to say, hey friend. Oh, I'm gonna have to switch it to hey friend. I, I shouldn't have looked at that one. Now I'm, I'm changing my, my whole mind on it. <laughs> no, 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 okay. Sorry for the waffling, guys. I'm trying to think whether I wanted this to be a Christmas card or be just a hello friend card because I've got a ton of hello friend cards to create. And this is, tis the season. And that will, that will actually keep this a Christmas theme because these are some Christmas colors. And I'll add this in crumb cake. And that will help to enhance the brown. So let's add a little bit of crumb cake. Yay. 
yeah, that looks nice. So I'll add that a little more. And of course I could use my markers to do this. It's a very small sentiment. And that's another thing I use the markers for is some different repair work here and there. If I need to enhance something or if I need to add a bit more color here or there, it's the markers I go to because they carry the same ink as my stamp pads. Now see how that just enhanced everything? It just allowed me to add a little bit more here and there. So that's the wonderful thing about this beta test. And if you're not familiar what the beta test is, then it's like a, a test run from Stampin' Up! And they have, they have a need, they know that there is a need for something in particular. And in this case, it will be this selling the individual markers, the Stampin' Write markers. But they want to see what the demand is. So by showing that there is a demand, then that's how we're going to get them to do it. And so they have, they have reached out to me and said, okay, we want you to, to see if there's a demand, get some orders for these markers together, and then we'll try it out and see how this works. So let's give them a really good response so that Stampin' Up! knows that we want the individual Stampin' Write markers. Because if we don't, then I'm I'm not I'm not sure what they're gonna do, but if there's a good response, then in a future publication we could definitely see individual markers being put back on sale. Alright, this is layered on a, another piece of Whisper White, and then I have a card base that is made from thick Whisper White. And I'll add just a few dimensionals here to give this a nice platform so that it has a nice presentation. And then we'll add some embellishments. I hope you guys like this technique. It's one of my favorites. It's one of the ways that I make cards when I'm just making them for non-videos, of course, when I'm creating a video, I would like to—I always want to share things that I think you guys will find useful and that you could duplicate in your crafting. And this is something that is totally—you can—you can create this on your own with absolutely no trouble at all. And it's the—it's the type of markers that you choose that will make this this particular technique successful. All right, so let's add a little bit of sparkle to our project. And we can choose from the frosted or the clear drops. And this is the take your pick tool. I kind of like the look of the frosted ones. You could use the flat spatula end or the point end. And I'm going to use the point end here. Maybe put them here and there in between where, where the little flowers are. Just a few small little pieces. And let's see what it would look like for a third one. This one has a bit of a mind of its own. It's kind of doing a little trapeze act here. Okay, so if I were to use another one, I think it might be too much unless I go in another direction. Nope, let's stick with two. And then I have something ready for the inside of the card as well. This is Tranquil Tide cardstock with Whisper White cardstock. And this is gonna echo the colors that are here. And we can use one of the other stamps, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> that are inside. And it's also a great opportunity to be able to use one of the greetings 
So we, because we use Tis the Season on the front, then it's a good opportunity to use this one on the inside. I'll switch over to a clear block for this. And stamp with some more crumb cake. This stamp I've done where the block lettering is in one color and the cursive is in another, that's a really fun way to use your markers for stamping sentiments as well. Very, very easy. So this project will be perfect for you to get a little artistic. I think it would be the casual crafter that would be somebody of a medium level would be very comfortable with using this technique and the avid crafter could actually go crazy and make all sorts of changes to the design and really be successful. And attach this to the inside with some liquid glue. This would also be a good time to use some linen thread. Just a little tiny piece of lemon, linen thread might work. That might be a really good addition here. And basically this is made with markers. We didn't use stamp pads except for here with the greeting and that could be done all with markers as well as this. If there's some crafting on the go that you have to do and you don't wanna bring stamp pads and blocks, then these markers would work out perfectly to be able to do that with your Stamparatus. So grab some markers and your Stamparatus and then you would be all set to go. Easy Christmas card. So I will flip the camera back around and I'm really happy with this card. I like the Christmas colors. I like the way that it has a little bit of sparkle, but what I like the best about it is that I was able to really choose where I placed the colors with the markers on the stamp. That part is my favorite, and it has a really good contour. Here's a really nice close-up. And it's a lot of fun. Sometimes when I'm looking at a project that I just want to create for like a, as an artistic outlet, then this is the type of technique that I will gravitate to and watercoloring, of course. But sometimes this is it, it looks much more simple on paper, like the simple coloring. But when you actually get down and see what kind of work is put into it, then that stamp set just really, really shines through. So this is a great example of using your stamp and write markers. Well, thank you all so much. Oh, thanks for your comments. You guys really love it. I am so happy that you do. Now, remember, if you want to participate in the beta test, it's open to demonstrators and non-demonstrators. The way that you can do that is by going, I'll, I'll be sure to point, put a link here and I've already got some people that are choosing to participate which is really exciting. There's no limit on the amount of markers that you can order except just no more than one color per person and then I'll distribute everything out from there. So if you like this type of work and you don't have any markers but you want to try it out this would be a great opportunity. The markers are going to be $3.50 per marker, and then once you've got as many markers as you want, then Stampin' Up! has a way to calculate the applicable local tax and the shipping. And the minimum shipping is just the same minimum shipping as Stampin' Up! $6.95. So you'll have to pay that on, on top of the cost of the markers and the sales tax. So thank you so much again for joining me today. This video is a way for me to be able to show new techniques and get some instant feedback as we go. You guys so far are saying that you really like this type of card and that's a wonderful thing. Now, if you don't wanna participate in the beta test, but you do like the markers, 
then if you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you can go to my online store and purchase packs of markers. And that would be by color family, like the brights would have 10 markers because that's how many colors are in the brights and the cost is $30 per pack. You can also purchase the big box of markers called Many Marvelous Markers that has all of the marker colors that we carry in the color line except for the in colors and I believe the cost for that is $123 but it's well worth it and it comes in a beautiful box, a nice presentation and the markers will go a very long way. So thank you all again so much for joining me and I hope to see you in another video very soon. Until then, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Please be safe and take care and show each other how much you love each other. And a happy Thanksgiving to you all. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Trip. Thanks for watching the video. See you next time.